Hi everyone, welcome back to the second part of this liver flush video. Uh, so this is the liver flush video for people who are having difficulty with their liver flushes and finding them themselves faced with lots of non-productive liver flushes, which is also <coughs> historically been my problem. So I've put together this multifaceted approach and um, I hope it's going to help um, other people like me. And the approach is designed to maximise bile output as much as possible in the week to 10 days running up to a liver flush. And remember that bile is what you want to increase because that is the natural detergent and the dissolver of liver and gallstones. So the first thing I want to... Uh, tell you about is that I'm taking uh, a combination of malic acid powder, uh, vitamin C powder and lemon juice two to three times every single day. I read that uh, citrus is um, a fantastic natural uh, dissolver of gall and liver stones. If you put a gallstone or a liver stone in pure lemon juice, it will quickly dissolve within a matter of hours. Obviously, you can't reproduce uh, the conditions of the test tube inside a human body. However, I believe that drinking undiluted lemon juice with um, malic acid and vitamin C is probably a very good way uh, to kickstart that process. So two or three times a day, I'm taking a quarter to half a teaspoon of uh, food grade malic acid and please don't go and get yourself synthetic malic acid. You need to look for L-malic acid, which is food grade malic acid, the same acid as is found in apples and cider and cider vinegar. You can use cider vinegar if you wish. Um, and I'm also using half to quarter teaspoon of ascorbic acid powder, which is the um, vitamin C. And I'm putting that both uh, both of those things in um, undiluted lemon juice, the juice of about two lemons, and then I'm knocking it back. If it's a little bit strong for you, dilute it with some uh, juice or coconut water or just plain water. But I prefer to take it uh, straight. I find it's quite strong and quite effective that way, and I can often feel it uh, kind of going down into my stomach and into my gut where it's hopefully um, going off into the uh, hepatic circulation to do some uh, dissolving work there. Um, so that's the first thing that I do. So the second thing I do is I incorporate a version of Karen Hurd's bean diet into my uh, daily regimen. And Karen Hurd is a researcher nutritionist who gets her clients to eat beans and or psyllium husk powder several times a day in order to maximise the, their uh, soluble fibre. And soluble fibre is, is the brush, really. It's like a huge sponge um, that helps mop up uh, toxins um, produced by digestion, byproducts, waste products of digestion. And... Um, takes them out through the stool and it helps to keep bile clean it helps the liver to produce new cleaner bile rather than taking the old bile that isn't taken out through the stool back into the intrahepatic circulation if there isn't enough soluble fiber this old bile will get recirculated and sent back to the liver where the liver has to detoxify and process all the um, end products of hormones chemical residues um, toxins, pathogenic end products all over again. Uh, it's much more likely to make stones with that old sticky bile um, and so you really want to use the soluble fibre as a, as a great kind of sponge or brush to kind of go sweep through the digestive system and take all those uh, end products, waste products out into the stool. So I don't do the full bean diet. I can't really face eating beans for breakfast, for instance, but I know people who do. Um, they make soups with beans. They have casseroles with beans. They, they find ingenious ways to um, incorporate beans and legumes into their diet. I eat beans at least once a day, and then I also take psyllium husk powder in between meals um, a couple of times a day, just a teaspoon in plenty of water. Do make sure if you're taking psyllium husk powder that you do drink plenty of water because otherwise it will end up constipating you. Uh, so that is the second thing I do.
The third thing I do is I have made my own custom blend of bitter herbs. And I think probably of all the methods that I'm talking about uh, in this video, I think this is probably the, uh, the key. And I think maybe if you just do one, um, it should probably be this one. So I think I mentioned in the first part of this video about why my liver flushes haven't always worked. Um, is my problem with candida infection, which I've had really since I was probably about eight years old. And I spent a long time, many decades, on antifungals. But as I mentioned before, my feeling now is that if you are on antifungals for a really long time, the uh, candida and other associated pathogens um, become resistant. Um, and they burrow uh, deeper into the body tissues um, where the immune system can't detect them and they form these sticky colonies called biofilm and this is what is inside my liver plugging up the ducts and making it very difficult to get stones out. So um, I've been taking these bitter herbs on and off I guess for gosh maybe two or three months and every flush that I've done since I've been on these bitter herbs has been productive. So it's been the longest run of productive flushes for a really long time. So I think this has made a big difference. And not to get too graphic, uh, because I'm not going that far and I'm not going to show you what came out of me. I did flush out um, a couple of flushes ago um, what I believe to be some biofilm and it was pretty horrific. Um, I didn't know what it was at first but um, I kind of looked at it and then looked at pictures of what I thought it might be on the uh, World Wide Web and I'm pretty sure that I flushed out some some biofilm there um, and since then my flushes have uh, been more productive and I've had more stones coming out so I think they were in my liver and they were stopping uh, the, the flush from working. So um, the five bitter herbs that I decided to um, go ahead and buy, I got from an online um, herbal pharmacy and they are wormwood, whorehound, gentian, golden seal and burdock. And I researched the uh, upper safety limit, so the, the, the most, the, the well tolerated dose, safe, uh, the safest tolerated dose for each herb, which is approximately five grams per herb per day. So I'm keeping within those limits. And I put five grams of each herb, uh, dried herb, into a big tureen um, and add uh, about a pint and a half of water, bring it to, a boil, to the boil, simmer it for half an hour, turn off the gas. I do this all in the evening, by the way, turn off the gas and then steep it all night. And then in the morning, I sieve it, throw the, the herbs away, keep the decoction in the fridge and then I drink a couple of doses um, during that day, one in the morning, one in the evening, both times on an empty stomach. It's really important that your stomach is is empty, so, so don't do it near food. Um, and it's very, very bitter uh, and pretty nasty. So if you're not hardcore, maybe don't do it. But um, if you're desperate, desperate enough to get well and to make progress with your liver flushes, I would heartily recommend it. It has been very successful for me. So the fourth thing I do is to is possibly the uh, is slightly controversial. Um, and I'm sure I'm going to get lots of people shouting me saying, oh, you shouldn't be doing that. And um, as I said at the beginning, this is a, uh, as a caveat with, with all these videos on YouTube. You know, we're not doctors. Um, we're not uh, medically trained. I am a nutritionist. Um, I've never claimed to be anything else. And this is what I'm doing for myself. Um, and it's up to you to do your own research and to make your own decisions. Um, so the fourth thing I do is I started about three months ago to take um, a few in, uh, essential oils internally. Now the jury seems to be out about this. There's a lot of aromatherapists who say this is a terrible thing to do. You're going to poison yourself. You're going to poison your internal organs. Um, but um, there are other experts um, out there who say that no, you're not going to damage yourself doing this as long as you make sure you're taking essential oils uh, cautiously. And also there are some 
uh, essential oils that should never be taken internally so you need to know which ones those are I'm not saying go out and get yourself a bunch of essential oils and take loads of it internally that's not what I'm saying at all I started very cautiously with one drop of each essential oil in a carrier oil like uh, some olive oil on a teaspoon and I took that and just monitored how I felt um, and then that, if that was okay then I did a second dose um, later on in the day of one drop each um, I'm taking uh, essential oils internally that are all known to either boost digestion or to increase bile output. So uh, there's a picture coming up about uh, of, of all the oils that I'm taking, but they include uh, peppermint, fennel, rosemary, lemon, chamomile, turmeric, ginger and coriander. And um, I found these very beneficial for, for digestion. And you know, I did take clove oil um, for five years, pretty much every day, um, you know, when I had, uh, when I was trying to just treat my candida and I didn't, you know, wasn't doing liver flushing or anything else. I just used clove oil as an antifungal. I have had no long term, Ill, you know, ill effects from it. But again, do your own research. Um, and, you know, if you do start on essential oils internally, make sure you know which ones are safe and start very cautiously and stop if you have any adverse reaction. So the last thing I want to talk about is something that I started doing a couple of months ago, <clears throat> which is red light therapy. Um, I'd read quite a lot about uh, red light therapy and I decided I wanted to try it for myself. Um, and there's lots of solid research behind it. It uses um, a narrow band of uh, the, the natural light spectrum. Um, it doesn't include any UVA or UVB light. It's isolated uh, red in near infrared light. And it's supposed to be great for boosting the overall immune system, um, for increasing ATP, which is the energy, little energy packets inside each cell, um, and for boosting the thyroid. I know people who have actually managed to come off thyroid medication by using red light regularly. So I wanted to give it a go. Um, as, of, as is often the case, I couldn't get what I needed here in the UK, so I had to go to a company called Therabulb, T-H-E-R-A-B-U-L-B, and uh, they exported uh, two 250 watt bulbs to me and um, I had to pay um, obviously for the delivery on top of the, uh, the, the cost of the bulbs but that was fine and then here in the UK on eBay I found a seller of uh, chicken, uh, chicken coop uh, clamp lights so I fixed the 250 watt bulbs into the clamp lights and the clamp lights can fit on, you know, just clamp onto any item of furniture. And um, I do a couple of sessions with the red lamps uh, every day. I do it on my liver uh, from about a foot away. I sit about a foot away. It's quite, they're quite hot. So obviously you have to take extra caution, don't leave them on, you know, near children or animals or, or near furniture, could catch fire, that kind of thing. Um, I do uh, a session on my liver and my, digest my digestive area, and then I also do um, a session on my adrenals. And the results have really, really been impressive. I've really enjoyed using them. I've had a real boost. Um, in terms of energy, mood, um, and I don't seem to need as much sleep, which is incredible. I used to be, you know, a nine hour or ten hour of sleep kind of girl, and now I feel absolutely fine on eight hours or sometimes even less. Um, so I've really been impressed by the red light therapy, and I would heartily recommend it um, to anybody who's suffering from invisible chronic illness. Um, it really does seem to be one of those things where the, uh, it's actually as good as it sounds. So uh, I'm going to show you a picture in a minute of my two lamps, uh, Ralph and Florian. Um, if you get the reference, uh, let me know. Uh, and um, yeah, I hope you enjoy them as much as I do. Um, if you get a couple, uh, do let me know how you get on. Um, please make sure you use a surge protector or some kind of thermal cutout um, just in case. 
um, you don't want to kind of bust your, you know, your hi-fi or, or anything um, else that's important to you um, that's electrical in the house. Um, and um, yes, they've been really fantastic for kind of overall health and well-being. And I think I probably sleep better as a result, sleep more deeply. Um, so they're a great adjunct to uh, the liver flush. I would heartily recommend them. Thanks so much for sticking with me with this uh, video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, please let me know if you have any thoughts or comments. Um, just a couple of things before I leave you. Um, for some people, uh, the uh, herbal bitter blend that I mentioned may be um, a little too much to stomach. So if so, um, there are plenty of herbal bitter blends that you can buy uh, commercially um, online or in your health food shop. Um, I would just kind of issue the caveat that um, they're usually steeped in alcohol and they're probably not going to be anything like as strong as the one that I make. However, if you do want to go for something a bit less strong, uh, there are plenty of formulations out there. I would uh, recommend you stay away, however, from formulations containing senna, which is quite a harsh laxative and your bowels can become dependent on senna. So I wouldn't um, opt for one with, with senna in. This is one that um, comes from Herb Farm that I've been quite impressed with. It's a spray, so it's really easy to use. You can carry it around with you, um, you know, when you're out and about. This is the one that my son uses at the moment. It's called Better Bitters by Herb Farm and it's it's quite um, nasty tasting. So it must be it must be good. Um, and I just also forgot to mention, um, obviously, one of the the kind of the big um, sort of uh, prevailing theory about why liver flushes are a load of old rubbish um, that, that the naysayers come out, trot out, um, is that, uh, you know, liver, all that's produced in a liver flush is a, a kind of soap uh, made out of the citrus and olive oil mixture. And that's really been touted a lot. It's put a lot of people off doing liver flushing. And I just wanted to say that obviously my experience really kind of refutes that, you know, I've done, I think, nine consecutive liver flushes at, at one stage where I produced nothing, no stones, no chaff, nothing. Um, so you'd think that if you were taking the same ingredients each time, it would produce a uniform set of results. Um, but in my case, it really hasn't. Also, when I did do that run of nine flushes um, without any results, my symptoms just got worse and worse. I felt more cold. Um, my mood was terrible. I felt very anxious. Um, my digestion was awful. My hormones were awful. Terrible PMT, all that kind of stuff. And then when I had the breakthrough th flush that you know, that, that um, kind of broke the, the back of the nine uh, you know, uh, unproductive flushes, all those symptoms got better again. So, um, and also I, I've done, you know, these nine days or 10 days of prep in the past and seen liver stones, small liver stones, but liver stones nevertheless in the loo, um, in the toilet. As I, um, so, I, you know, without even taking the citrus and the olive oil mixture. So, and they look exactly the same as the ones that you pass when you do a liver flush. So I can categorically tell you that um, it's it's absolutely not true. Um, what you pass are genuine liver stones and you shouldn't give up and you should carry on um, because I'm about to do my 45th liver flush and they've literally saved my health. So happy flushing.